Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with a video on Timon's cunning composition. Jan Timon, the Dutch Grandmaster, the strongest player behind Kasparov and Karpov in the 1980s, was not only a very strong player, he was also a brilliant composer. And I have one of his compositions at the end of this video. It's also number six in the series, The Bishop Rules, and I have three compositions for you. Let's look at the first one, which is from a composer with the name of I. Krikeli, and it was published in 1986. It is white to play and win. White only has rook and bishop, black has a queen and two pawns. So from a arterial point of view, white is not doing great, but this is a very nice battery these two pieces lined up and the black king does not have much elbow room that's an important motif in this position how does white win this the first move is rook to d3 that is a move with a checkmate threat rook h3 would be checkmate so what does black do against that well there's really only one way and that's queen a7 check white is in check so bishop d4 shielding the check and attacking the black queen at the same time and now what to do against rook h3 checkmate well black still has a move queen d7 covering the checkmating square and what is very nice in this composition is that the battery has changed first it was a rook up front now it is the bishop up front of this battery and that gives white a chance to win the game with a very nice move bishop g7 check the bishop rules because now white is easily winning you cannot take with the king because then you lose the queen and if you take with the queen then there is rook h3 and that's checkmate very nice composition with few pieces on the board let's look at it again in slow motion we have that battery with the rook up front rook d3 is the first move Threatening checkmate, black has to give a check, bishop d4, the black queen has to go to d7 to cover the checkmate square, and now the battery has changed the bishop and the rook have changed position, and that gives white a chance to play bishop g7 check. You have to do something, you can't take with the king because you lose the queen and you lose the game, and if you take with the queen, then the h3 square is unprotected and the g7 square is blocked by the black queen, so the black king is checkmated. I, Krikeli, 1986. The second composition I want to show you is from J. Ulrichsen and was published, published in 2001. White to play and win again. How can we do this? Yes, white is a full piece up, but this pawn is very dangerous and is very close to queening. White's pawn is still far away. Also, white's king is far away. So what can we do? But we cannot play up the b pawn because then there is king g1 and it is actually black who's going to win this game of chess there's nothing to do against queening and white pawn is still far away from the queening square so that doesn't work a king move doesn't work either because again there is king g1 and promotion from black is unavoidable black wins so let's go back again so it has to be a bishop move well let's try something let's try bishop c4 does that win for white? Because then we have the maneuver to go to d5 to control the h1 promotion square. Looks good. Let's see what happens. King g2. The black king has to go after the white pawn to try and make a draw. Bishop d5 check. You have to control the h1 square. King f2. Now b4 running with the pawn. King e3. b5. King d4. And now the bishop is attacked. If you play b6, that bishop gets taken, and this, this leads to a draw, as we see. This game is a draw. If it was white to play, he would have a skewer, but it is black to play. So let's go back. We played bishop c4 in the first move. We played king g2, bishop check to control the h1 square, king f2. You have to go running with your pawn if you want to win this game. King e3, b5, king d4. And we just played b6 that doesn't work so let's save our bishop bishop h1 for example then king c5 and 
you're going to lose your pawn, which means you cannot win the game anymore. Bishop c6 doesn't work because black promotes. You have to take that queen, and this is also a draw, which means bishop c4 on the first move does not work. So let's go back again. What about another bishop move? Bishop a6. Let's have a look. King g2. Bishop b7 check again. You have to control the h1 square. King f2. b4. King e3. b5. The king comes closer. b6 and king c5. And that pawn on b6 is now lost. Cannot be saved. And black has his draw. So bishop a6 on the first move does not work either. The solution is bishop b5. And why is that different? Well, let's have a look. King g2, bishop c6 check, king f2, b4, king e3, b5, king d4. And now white can play b6, king c5. And we saw something similar before, but not exactly the same. There's a difference because now white can win with b7. Yes, give up that bishop. Black has to take, and both players, queen. But now there's a difference, because now it's white to move, and he has queen a8 check with his cure. Winning the brand new black queen. King c5, and this is a winning position for white. So in the initial position, only bishop b5 works. That is the move, even though it stands in front of the b-pawn. Bishop a6 doesn't work, because then the bishop has to go to b7 to control the h1 square and is in the way of the pawn. And bishop c4, as we saw, is too close by, is not far enough. The black king can approach that bishop too quickly when it goes to d5. So bishop b5 is the happy medium. It looks it's in the way of the b-pawn, but it isn't really, because it has to go to c6 anyway to cover the h1 square and then... It turns out that white can win this position because of that nice skewer at the end. J. Ulrichsen, 2001. And I will show you the position that Jan Timman composed. I'm not sure about the year. I found this composition in a YouTube video when he was interviewed for Dutch TV. It's white to play and win. Yes, we have two bishops because this video is about the bishop. Black has six pawns, white has five. The black king is in a very awkward spot. What also strikes the eye is these two black pawns, which are about to promote. White is playing from the bottom up. Let's try something. Let's try b7 with white to threaten and make a queen. And there's nothing that black can do against that. But black can promote himself. b1 queen. If you take that queen... A new one appears on b1, and yes, you can promote, but the new black queen is covering the promotion square. Queen takes b8. Is black winning with his extra queen and bishop? No, this position is actually stillmate. But that is what is not what we were after. We wanted white to win. So let's go back to the beginning. Initial position. Let's try something else. Let's try and take on a7 so that we can promote on a8 if possible. But then the black bishop, which is of the light squares, can cover the a8 square. You can play bishop c4, trying to distract that bishop. Now you should not take that bishop, because then a8 queen does win for white. Bishop g8, queen f8, and black is too late with his promotion. This is checkmate. So let's go back. We took on a7. Bishop d5, bishop c4, a little trick, you cannot take that bishop, but bishop c6 leads to a draw. Bishop takes a2, protecting that promotion square, but this position is equal. None of the players can make progress with their pawns. So back to the start again. What else is there? Well, there is not so much. Let me give you the solution, which is very spectacular. The only way for white to win this position is by playing bishop d3 to b1. What is this? How can this be good for white? How can this win the game for him? Well, 
The problem for black is that the B pawn is now stopped in its tracks. It cannot promote. The A pawn can promote. So what about A1 queen? B7. And black has to hurry up and do something with his new queen to stop white winning. Queen A4. B8 queen check. Queen E8, you have to block the check. Then queen takes B2. Very nice. This is a beautiful composition. You have to interpose again. And that will lead to checkmate this way. White wins. That was after bishop B1. The key move. And then promotion to a queen. On A1. What if we promote to a queen on B1? That's also possible. Then also white wins. B7. Queen E4. There's really nothing better. White promotes. Black cannot prevent white promoting. You have to interpose again. The queen or the bishop. There's that queen takes B2 check move again. You have to play the king. Or give away your queen. And this is checkmate. Very nice. So after bishop B1. We saw that both promotions to queen of the A pawn. Do not work for black. White wins. So is that the solution then? Well, almost. Not quite. Because we have another defense for black. Which is promotion on a1 to a bishop. Yes, I told you the bishop rules in this video. And why is that different? Why is that any good for black? White plays b7. Bishop g8. And if white now is not careful and promotes to a queen... Then it is black who is still mated. And that was why black got a bishop in the corner. That bishop is dead. Cannot make any moves. Which gives black this stillmate trick. Wow, that's amazing. So back to the start again. White has to win. But doesn't win this way. Bishop b1 is the key move. a1 bishop! Exclamation mark With that stillmate trick that we just saw. b7... Bishop g8, and we know that b8 queen is still mate. How can white win here? He still has a win by under-promoting himself. Yes, to a bishop as well. This is the only way that white wins. It's not still mate. That is the trick. This bishop still has a move. This is not a queen. So the bishop on g8 can still play. For example, bishop c4. And then bishop takes a7 is the move. Black has to do something. For example, take that pawn. Then bishop d4 check. King g8 only move. Bishop g7, which is threatening. Bishop a2 checkmate. Yes, that bishop on b1 has a function other than to stop the b pawn. If you play king f7, then you lose the pawn on a7. And white will win. Because black has a dead piece on a1. For example, bishop b5. Then white can win the g pawn as well with check. King e6. And that bishop hurries back to b1 to make sure the bishop on a1 stays in its cage. And this pawn will decide the game. So where were we? Let's go back all the way to the beginning. We played bishop b1. Black promotes to a bishop. That was the best defense with that still made trick. b7. Bishop g8, and now white should not promote to a queen, but sh should promote to a bishop. The black bishop on g8 still has a move. For example, bishop c4. White takes on a7. Black, for example, takes on a6. And then bishop d4 check. King has to play. And bishop g7. Very nice move with that checkmate threat with bishop a2. We just saw king f7 doesn't work. What about bishop c4? To deal with bishop a2. Well then there is a6. And that pawn will go through. So you have to take it. And now bishop a2 check. Bishop c4. And this is a checkmate with two bishops. What a wonderful, incredible, amazing composition from the Dutch Grandmaster Jan Timman. There are not so many over the board Grandmasters who also compose. Vasily Smyslov, the 7th world champion is one of them. And so is Grandmaster Jan Timman. What a beautiful composition. I hope you enjoyed it. And the game of myself against the chess to impress viewers. Let's go to the current position. I've just played 
d4 d5 on the eighth move and it is your move please put the move you want to play in the comments of this video and you will be in the raffle for a chess book at the end of this game i will raffle a chess book amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game hope you will participate it's an exciting position we're still in the opening and let me know what you want to play each sunday in the video on the viewers games i publish your move and then my reply and i hope you will take part in our game and i also hope you enjoy this video the sixth installment of the bishop rules you can find the earlier installments in the playlist which is also in the descrip description box underneath this video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the chess to impress channel and please leave a comment i will read them all and i will reply to them all if you like the video it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on youtube you can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.